All right, this is a heat transfer problem, and we are dealing with oil, engine oil, that's flowing over a flat plate. It has a velocity of 0.1 meters per second and a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Now, this flat plate has a length of 1 meters, and the surface temperature is uh, 20 degrees Celsius. Now, they want us to find velocity and thermal boundary layer thickness right here at the tailing edge trailing edge then they want us to find the local heat flux and the surface shear stress again right here at the trailing edge they want us to find the total drag force and heat transfer total drag force and total heat transfer per width per unit width basis now, first is a good idea to kind of figure out what are we dealing with before we get started. It's good if you have a formula sheet right here. This is how mine looks like. It, you should create one for yourself too. Go through the book and break it up. If you want, pause the video and see what you, what can you see. How is this broken up? But overall, let's go through the main idea. And this is exactly the same way as my formula sheet is structured uh, right here, the one you saw. So, what are we dealing with? We have a heat transfer problem in this. In heat transfer, we have three main parts, right? Conduction, convection, radiation. What are we dealing with here? here? We have a fluid going over a solid surface. This is a convection. We can cross these two out. Now, convection... What kind of convection we have? Are we dealing with external flow or internal flow? We are not inside a pipe, a duct or anything like that. So we can confidently say external flow. Now this one breaks up in flat plate or blunt body. Here we're dealing with a flat plate. So we can cross this one out. Our problem stated that a surface is at 20 degrees Celsius and they don't mention anything about the constant flux. So we can cross this one out and we know we're going to be right here in this category. Now, first, I already crossed it out, so I guess I gave away what's coming. But right now, I don't know where I am. I'm laminar or turbulent. I have no idea yet. We're going to have to find that out. So from the formula sheet, right here uh, see external flow flat flat plate uh, isothermal surface laminar turbulent or mixed these are the formulas that i narrowed it down to as of right now now from these let's find out are we having a laminar turbulent or a mixed flow we need to determine our reynolds number that's what's going to help us figure out laminar or turbulent. So here's two formulas for our Reynolds number. And I'm going to use this one. U is our velocity, length of the plate, divided by our kinematic viscosity. Now, this is a property of our fluid. So we're going to have to go ahead and find it in properties, in a property table. So I like always to leave like a side of my paper empty because we're going to be filling it in with all the properties that we find in tables. The first I would like to mark our critical Reynolds number, right? We're going to have 5 times 10 to the fifth. That's our critical that divides laminar and turbulent areas. Now, when we looked at our formulas, all of these are based on film temperature. So it doesn't matter which category I fall in. I will be needing properties from film temperature. So therefore, I go ahead and first calculate that. Film temperature equals 20 plus 100 degrees Celsius divided by 2, that's 60. And let's convert to Kelvin because all our tables are in Kelvin. So we're dealing with a temperature of 333 Kelvin. Now we need kinematic viscosity. We're going to go to our property tables and find what we need but since 333 is not shown in our property table we're gonna have to interpolate for it 
Here's a quick review in case you forgot how it is. Pause the video and look it over. But this is how I interpolate it right here. These are my values and my kinematic viscosity 86.1 times 10 to the negative 6 meters square per second. Now, we have everything, so I can go ahead, plug into my Reynolds number formula right here and find the value of 1161. Now, if we compare this one to our critical, which is 5 times 10 to the 5th, we can see it is much smaller. Therefore, we're dealing with laminar flow. So, from our formula sheet, we narrowed it down to this part, right? But now we can cross mixed and turbulent out. We are working with all of only these formulas, which are in the laminar section. So that's why I had this one crossed out turbulent. We don't need those. We just work in from all those formulas. We're going to be working only in this one section. Now, finally, we can turn to the whatever the problem is asking us to find, which is velocity boundary layer thickness and thermal boundary layer thickness right here at the end, uh, trailing edge of this plate. We know we need formulas from our laminar section right here. Velocity boundary layer equals 5x over square root of Rex. Now, for us, the x, we want it at the end, so that means x is equal to L, which is equal to 1. We have all we need. Let's plug it in, and we can find the value of 0 0.147 meters to be the thickness of our velocity boundary layer. Now, again, from the laminar correlations, we can take a look and see that velocity boundary layer over thermal boundary layer is equal to Proncton number on the power of one third. Now the Proncton number is a property again, so we need to go back to our property tables and find what we need. Same thing, we're going to have to interpolate for it. Here's our value that we found. Now we can go ahead, plug in, and find our thermal boundary layer to be 0 0.0143 meters which is significantly smaller than what uh, we found up here. Let's continue with our uh, local heat flux at the end of the plate. For this one, we'll write up first our flux formula for convection, which is H times Ts minus T infinite. Now, the flux, that's exactly what we want to find. The H, we don't know it, so we're going to have to find it. Ts minus T infinite, both of these we know. So let's focus on our convection coefficient. From the laminar correlations, we can see that we have this formula. In this one, we have Hx, exactly what we want to find. We also have X, K, Reynolds number, and Proncton number. Our x, again, we're working at the edge of the pla uh, plate, so that x is equal to L. K, we don't know this guy. Reynolds number we know, Proncton number we know. So let's go back to the table and find our K right here. Same way, again, we have to interpolate for it. Then we find it. Now we can plug everything in, into our formula, and find our hx which is, we could mark it also as HL, 16.26 watts per meter square Kelvin. Now, this is not what we were interested in. We need to come back here and use this formula with the H that we found. Now, flux equals, this is our the local flux right here at the end, right? So, our local flux at the end we have H, we have these two, and we are able to find negative 1300.5 Watt per meter square. At the end, we'll uh, explain what is this negative. Now, let's. Uh, the next uh, part is our surface shear stress. Let's find this guy. 
again going back to our formula from formula set from our laminar category that we found we know that we need to stay in this area right here we can select the appropriate formula friction coefficient equals tau over one half rho u square equals 0 0.664 re to the power of negative one half now we are interested in this tau right here so we're going to use these two parts of this formula we have everything except rho which is another property so again we're going back to our tables and we're going to be interpolating for it just like we did for our other formulas let's go ahead and solve for tau right here then since we have everything we need we can go ahead plug in and find that our local right here the one at the end at this point shear uh, stress is right here tau 0.0842 newton meet per meter square now we're gonna switch a little bit so we need to pay attention to this until now we were finding local 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 all these were local ideas here they want us to find the total drag force force and total heat transfer but per unit width basis so to start with this part of the problem we're actually gonna go back to our strength of material ideas and from there we're gonna use this formula which is shear stress shear stress is force over area for us is the drag force over area but we're gonna put a two in front of it because we're gonna consider the top and the bottom so two areas we are working with that's why you see this two right here we're gonna go ahead and solve for our drag force which is tau times two times area now they want us to find our drag force on a per unit width basis so all that means this is our plate that we're looking right there just in a 3d uh, rendering so this is our length and this is our width and we want to get rid of this guy because we want to calculate it on a per unit width basis so that's what you see right here fd what we found right here divided by the width so we're gonna plug in our fd what we find right here tau times two times a our a length times width right so from here the two w's will fall out now we have tau times two times the length of our plate now this is a bit tricky because this tau that we have here is not the same that we have down here this is only the shear stress right here at the end this one is for the whole plate so we need to make sure we don't accidentally confuse these two so therefore we're gonna write up our correlation from our formula sheet for our average friction coefficient which is right here from here we are able to go ahead solve for our tau we're gonna use only these two sides solve for tau let's see do we have everything we have all our components so we can go ahead and plug in and find our shear uh, stress right here which is 0 0.168 newton meter square now this is not what they were asking they were asking for the drag force per unit width which we can go ahead come back right here where we found a nice formula for it uh, i mean right here plug in our tau two times the length not the area the length and find our drag force 0.337 newton per meter this is our answer for this guy there you go now our last component that we need to find is the heat transfer per unit width now the heat transfer just pure heat transfer equals flux times area right now heat transfer per unit length 
is the flux times length. From this, we can go ahead. We're going to plug in the convection formula for flux, which is H times Ts minus T infinite. We used it up here too. Times the length. Again, let's not forget that we are working with both sides. That's what this 2 represents. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to take all these off. Let's, uh, now, we're going to go ahead right here. I just rearranged it to make it a little bit prettier. Plug everything we have. Plug it in. But HL average. This, the H that we found right here. Again, this is the local one. We need the average one, which we can, from our correlations, from the laminar section, average h equals 2 times the local h. Now, that is 2 times 1626, what we found right here. We have our average h. We can now go ahead and plug this in here. And there you go. We can find negative 5200 watts per meter. Now why is this negative here and here too? We are dealing with this because in uh, a lot of problems we have when the air or some kind of fluid is going over a hot plate which is, means that the plate is hotter than the fluid over it. So that would be a positive flow because from the plate it the heat transfer is going towards the fluid. But here we can see that the fluid, which is our engine oil, is 100 degrees and the surface is at 20. So therefore our heat transfer will be going from the fluid to the plate. 